Hey, hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back. This is a special Red Pill Religion podcast. Red Pill Religion, where we say, amongst other things, that you don't have to be religious. You really don't. That doesn't mean you get to lie about history, lie about science, or lie about religious people. So please support our work on redpillreligion.com. If you go to redpillreligion.com, you will see that every day we are updating our website uh, uh, with the latest videos that we've produced, videos produced by others, um, uh, 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 articles by our staff, articles submitted to us by others. And, of course, on redpillreligion.com, you'll see we do accept your spiritual and financial donations we take donations via paypal we are back on patreon we take bitcoin we are also on maker support indeed find us on patreon at red pill religion find us on gab ai at red pill religion find us on maker support at red pill religion come see our facebook group on red pill religion um we're happy to hear from all of you and of course here on youtube please give us a like Please give us a subscribe. Please tell your friends or enemies. And so here's the story, kids. I'm still not feeling well. And so, uh, but a lot of people, a lot of people have been wanting us to take on Aaron Ra. Now, as I've noted, we've recently taken a slightly different turn and we're going to be trying to be a little less abrasive and ranty here. Um, so we've hidden most of our old content on the channel and reevaluating what we'll what will we do? We did an earlier one on Aaron Ron. Perhaps it was too mean. I honestly think he had it coming, but maybe that'll never see the light of day again. We'll see. But we're going to be trying. And literally, Aaron Ron may be one of the most disliked figures um, uh, in atheist land. Uh, he's really, uh, uh, and it's not just Christians who can't stand him, by the way. I, I think of Aaron Ron as the original cry bully. Um, who acts like he uh, is the constant sub subject of hate when in reality he puts out hatred for a living and he acts like the victim. It's called projection. I think nothing shows it more clearly um, than this historical Holocaust, Holodomor, genocide, revisionist garbage that we're going to look at here. It's going to be very hard for me to be nice um, about this man who is a liar. I'm going to point out now before we begin that in the low bar, we haven't got them all in the low bar yet, but we will, you know, after the show is ended and we'll have it on redpillreligion.com, a selection of just some links that we'll be using throughout this, such as the genocide of the souls that talks about the hideous torture of Christians by militant atheists, um, uh, information that a friend of ours from Romania is going to be talking about, about the hideous torture of Christians by atheists. Um, we'll be taught, we don't find Wikipedia a reliable source in most cases, but we do know a little about de-Christianization of France during the French Revolution. And at the moment, this Wikipedia article is mostly accurate. We've got uh, testimony um, of uh, North Korean defectors talking about the brutality of atheists toward the religious people there. We're going to be talking about Buddhism and the revolution in Cambodia and the way militant atheists who talk exactly like Aaron Ra uh, butchered uh, Buddhists for the crime of being authentic spiritual Buddhists who believed in reincarnation and the spiritual and higher states of existence and all that which the secularists deny. We'll be talking about Storming the Heavens, The League of the Militant Godless by Daniel Paris, an excellent history of the League of the Militant Godless a specifically militant atheist campaign by Stalin uh, using hate propaganda, very like the hate propaganda done by Aaron Ra, to butcher, muter, mutilate, torture. Um, we'll be talking about the new atheist denial of history by Borden Painter, who's also an expert on how atheist fascists like Mussolini uh, tortured, butchered, and otherwise harmed innocent religious people, Christians and Jews. Um, and we'll be talking about that and more. Basically, everybody, uh, Aaron Ra is a despicable man up there with Holocaust revisionists, up there. I mean, and I mean the real ones, because I will say there is room for some people to go back and say, all right, this number here was exaggerated or this number here was too low. 
I mean, for example, one of the things that gets elided from the Holocaust is three million Catholics and quite a few Lutherans were murdered in the Holocaust for the crime of staying faithful and not wanting to adopt, you know, fake Christianity imposed by the Nazi government called positive Christianity, which was basically atheist uh, Christianity. There's nothing but a pack of lies coming out of this hateful cult leader, um, Aaron Raw, and I will repeat that he is a hateful cult leader, and his fans are frequently some of the most horrible, nasty people you will ever encounter online. Um, they should be ashamed of themselves. They are no better than, than neo-Nazis, in my view. They are no better than ISIS. They are no better than Antifa. They're no better than white supremacists. They're no better than black supremacists. Aaron Ra and his fans are just horrible people who spread hate propaganda and abuse innocent religious people for fun and profit. No respect, and I don't think anybody else should. Now, we had so many people wanted to do this. I don't have time for individual introductions because we actually had to turn people away. And as I count, we have like nine, ten people here. Everybody wanted to take a shot at Aaron Ra. I will just notice, note that we have Albino Snowman, an Eastern Orthodox Christian, we have Ra, uh, deflating atheism, uh, yay, deflating atheism, one of my fellow Catholics. We have Derek, a.k.a. the Gaytheist and ANCAP, an atheist who can't stand Aaron Ra. We have Jean-Baptiste, yet another Eastern Orthodox Christian, Greek in his case. Mr. Brass, an apostate Christian, now a deist. Robert, not in anything, but sort of basically a deist with a lot of background in, in things like Buddhism and knows a lot about the atheist genocide against Buddhists in place like Cambodia. We have White Injun, who is a Bible Christian and a, a secular theist. And we have Tiger Crusader, who is a R Romanian Orthodox, right? And from Romania? Yep, that's right. All right, that is quite a collection of people. By the way, this should also let Aaron Ra and his fans know, you are not allowed to simply call us Christian apologists. You just don't get to do that. That's not what this is. You can't say this is Catholics attacking you. You can't take this as Christians attacking you. You can take it as a different group of people of varying religions taking you on and calling you out on your crap, sir. And crap is what it is. By the way, yes, this is me being nice. I think I, I'm really wanting to be a lot more pungent. Let's go ahead and, and, and take this man's uh, uh, propaganda video. Uh, we're going to go about one minute at a time. And from this point on, I'm going to ask people to raise their hands. And so, you know, I'll, I'll do my best to have a cue going and, and pay attention to who wants to go first. You get to raise your hands while he's talking. Let's go. Some religious propagandists like to pretend that they are just and good and righteous and that anyone who believes differently is somehow inherently evil, especially if we don't have any faith-based beliefs at all, as if none of us have ever done anything good, which of course means that they have to ignore all the good that so many of us actually do, and instead exaggerate the bad as much as possible, even if they have to lie to do that. Here in America, that sort of propaganda most often comes from Christians and Protestants in particular. These people feel empowered by a sense of persecution. But somehow having their beliefs questioned, criticized, or ridiculed doesn't inspire them to reevaluate their position as it logically should. Instead, they're determined to double down so that an already unreasonable belief becomes an incurable delusion, which they'll actually brag about having such strong faith. The more severe the persecution, the more justified they think their belief is. So they want to feel persecuted. It's like a badge of honor for professional victims. Christians claim to be the most persecuted people in America even though they're still the dominant demographic and always have been. Okay, yeah, atheists always project because this man just described himself and everybody in his horrible little cult movement. There is, there is more to say, but I will let other people say it. People did raise their hands, and the first person to raise his hands was deflating atheists. Deflating atheism, what would you like to say to Mr. Uh, Ra, Mr. Aaron here? Oh, well, oh, yeah. uh, of course, of course. I I'm feeding back. Uh, I just thought it was ironic that he said that that we we take uh, any challenge as a personal offense. I think that describes uh, atheists uh, perfectly. And he says we have no faith positions. We don't believe you. I mean, I I think most atheists have faith in all sorts of things. So I, I disagree with his assertion that they have no faith positions. But what I wanted to say before we even started, uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to feel like I'm hogging here. 
But if when he inevitably says that his brand of atheism has nothing to do with with the anti-theistic campaigns of of these of these atheistic states, uh, I just want to point out what we're looking at right now. His T-shirt says the first commandment contradicts the first amendment. Well, now let's think about what that means. The first commandment is you shall uh, love God with all your heart. That is your private uh, expression of faith. So what he's saying is your private expression of faith uh, uh, is, is an infringement on his rights. So already we see the totalitarianism in embryo just from the slogan on this t-shirt. Okay, Tiger Crusader also put up his hands. Go ahead, Tiger Crusader. Yeah, Tiger. hold on. Yeah, yeah. Tiger hold on Crusader, by the way, again, is our Romanian Orthodox friend from Romania who has something to say about the persecution by atheists in Romania. But go ahead. Yeah. yeah, I really like it how he says that uh, we're playing the victim when. Uh, I'm sorry. When uh, atheist propagandists like him do it constantly, like if I ha if I had a penny every time I heard about the fucking Inquisition, I could afford to drop out of college right now. When in fact, uh, if you take the sheer numbers of um, of Christians who were murdered by the communist atheist, and yes, I am going to call it communist atheist because that's also what they call themselves uh, by the communist atheist. Bolsheviks um, during the uh, from uh, 19 from 1917 to 1989 goes in well into the tens of million and this isn't just everyone who was killed by communism no that's 100 million meanwhile if you take a look at all the people who were killed by the Inquisition this also includes uh, Christians Jews uh, atheists and others it's about 50,000 people over the course of centuries, yet it's propped up as this uh, genocide committed by the evil Christians uh, be in order to spread their faith. Like, if you listen to them, you would think that thousands of people got burned at the stake every day, which really is not the case. I mean, obviously, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that the Inquisition was good or that it didn't uh, infringe on human rights, but it's obviously incredibly blown out of the water okay robert freed you all robert you also open uh, raised your hand and then we're going to go after after you're done so so he says that you know he's basically when he says that you know um many christians are religious propagandists i find that really hypocritical because this guy's an anti-religious slash atheist propagandist so By the it's way, like everybody, the Robert, Robert is not a Christian. Go ahead. No, I'm not a Christian. I have a quasi-Buddhist, quasi-Christian background. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it just annoys me how he refers to quote-unquote religious propagandists, and yeah, this guy is an anti-religious slash atheist propagandist. Yeah, and it's not deniable that he is one. That's the the worst thing about you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Aaron Ra, is you pretend you and your ideology are not up for examination and you get to pass judgment on everybody else's that's one of the many problems all right we're gonna we're gonna reset the head of the hey, hands Q. Hey, Dean. what's that go ahead I have, I have a little something to say to mr raw when he was saying that the uh oh shit, it was at the very beginning that they will attack anyone this is the, who gay, this is the gay atheist and cap Go ahead. I'm not the fucking token either. No one's better not call me a fucking token in this. Token. I'm here my fucking accord. No, yeah. I, in case anyone wants to call me a fucking token. But yeah. in this one where he said um, they were willing to go against any, um, what was it? He was generalizing that they demonize anyone that, are, um, that goes against everything that they believe or something along the lines. I, I know I'm butchering the statement, but I find that really fucking ironic because Look at how he was to the skeptics and the atheists who were not for atheism plus or for modern feminism. Look at how he treated us. He treated us like shit. Or look at the libertarians. He treats them like shit, and he spews lies about them. Once you, yeah, um, he, 
gay atheist and and cap here is not a fucking token and we got more than one atheist hang out with us we got more than one atheist volunteer because some people who are not believers are still not dedicated to hating on and mistreating their religious friends which is you know in any case all right we're gonna play a little more we're gonna go about another minute max yeah oh i got something i i put raised hand in there i apologize um, i missed you so we'll get you next time. All right. Well, let's go ahead and do another minute, and I'll let you go first next time. Is that fair? All right. I'm sorry I missed you. I apologize. We'll go play another minute. Uh, hands raised again. Um, um, uh, brass gets to go first next time. Uh, but everybody, reset and raise your hands again when you want. When you come with something you want to say, which they think makes the U.S. a Christian country. It almost is, now that they own and control everything at every level of state and federal uh, government and literally lay down the law. They're so persecuted, aren't they? We atheists are outnumbered, outfinanced, and certainly outgunned, but we're committed to defending the First Amendment against their constant attacks because we've had a lot of history to show us what they'll do to us and everyone else once they get that out of the way. The Founding Fathers knew that, too. That's why the First Amendment is there. But these religious extremists tend to have an altered and enhanced view of history. It is propaganda, after all. For example, modern Protestants distance themselves from crusaders, inquisitors, and conquistadors by blaming all that on Catholics, as if Catholics are godless, merry-worshipping pagans who really aren't Christian. Now, first of all, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, there are over a billion Roman Catholics, more than twice as many as all Protestant and Orthodox denominations combined. The inclusion of Catholics is the reason why Christianity is still the world's leading religion. But if uh, I think he's going to actually, I'm going to let him go a little more on this. Hang on. If Catholics are not Christian, then Christianity loses its privileged position, and Islam becomes the dominant religion. Okay, I'm just going to say he's totally playing games there. Um, uh, only a minority of Protestants would claim. The Catholics are not Christians. I mean, I give some Protestants a hard time because I don't believe some of their doctrines. Like, I don't believe in Sola Scriptura, but I know some of them are Christians. Most of them are, are Christians. I mean, if they're validly Trinitarian baptized and, and, they assert, and they assert certain things, they're just automatically Christians. And that is true. Most Christians are in agreement with that. So trying to, I mean... And, and, and the ludicrous claim of a minority of Protestants that uh, Catholicism is just paganism would also require you to say that Eastern Orthodoxy, Assyrian Orthodoxy, Oriental Orthodoxy, like the Coptics, um, uh, Anglicanism, and much of Lutheranism and some other forms of Protestantism are all also not Christian. And you wind up with a tiny minority of a, some Protestants making this absurd claim. Furthermore, Islam is not monolithic and has the Shia-Sunni divide and divides within each of those. You're playing word games. Only a small minority of Christians would claim that Catholics are not Christian. You are taking a radical fringe position even for Protestants, sir. And I know that as a former Protestant who sometimes argues with my Protestant friends. Okay, um, let's see, who was up first? John Baptiste, you, sir, what you got to say? Oh, I was, um, you know, you said I'd go first. Oh, I'm sorry, that's right, Brass, you're supposed to go first, then John Baptiste. You go, Brass. All right, I was going to say, like, the First Amendment, as Professor of Economics, um, Dr. Judd Patton states it, it was simply meant that the federal government could not prohibited like a single national denomination, which was to be a smack in the face to the to Great Britain, which had done that with the Church of England. It was done primarily to protect re religion from government. It was not to protect the government from religion. It was also, you know, it was not the intent of the First Amendment wasn't to keep religion and morality out of the halls of government, as virtually all state constitutions require their elected officials to affirm the Christian faith. It was not done to separate religious principles from public life. And it wasn't until 1947 in the Supreme Court case of Everson and Board of Education, where the meaning of separation of church and state was um was radically changed from what 
um, the Danbury Baptist letter had originally done with Thomas Jefferson, which all they all the Danbury Baptist Church wanted was to to affirm that you know that the federal government would not make a national government. It had no bearing on whether states did it. Mr. Brass is correct, and Mr. Brass is also not a Christian. Uh, next up, I have Albino. Oh, no, no, John Baptiste. John Baptiste. Go ahead, John Baptiste. Oh, John Baptiste, you did raise your hand, man. John Baptiste may be losing his place in line. Okay. Uh, 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 Robert, Robert, you had your hand up. Robert, me? I'm sorry, no, Robert Fried. Oh. Dimitri. Um, oh, yeah. Um, I wanted to say, he mentioned about the, um, the whole um, foundation of our um, Constitution and the separation of church and state. Yeah, they did establish that. However, they in no way were hostile to organized religion or the faith at the time. Um, there is a quote from James Madison. He states, our constitution was made only for a whole, um, for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate. It is wholly inadequate, inadequate to the government of any other. Robert is not a Christian. Uh, Robert is an historian. Uh, Tiger Crusader, you had your hand up. Uh uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that I my head started to hurt when he said that Christians distanced themselves from crusaders. Like, honestly, this is, like, this whole crusaders were genociders uh, narrative is just so false and so propagandistic. And I'm talking both atheist and Islamic propaganda. Because, it, because the crusades were a war of defense, period. They were, the, when, by the time of the First Crusade, two-thirds of the Christian world had been conquered, the Middle East and North Africa. And, and it was, I, I admit, the Crusaders did do some horrible things, but it was no worse than any other um, medieval conflict. You, thank and, you for saying that. Um, I know a lot of the bad feelings on, on the Crusades do come from Eastern Orthodox who remember some of the particular mistakes that Catholics have apologized for. But I, I know most Eastern Orthodox have pretty much accepted the apology by now. Not all, but pretty much most have. Yeah, I, I do see some, uh, some anti-Catholic sentiments sometimes, but most of us uh, see Catholics as brothers. Yeah, and I find that much more common. All right, I see that Robert Fried, or did we already get you, Robert? You already got me. You already got me. I did already get you. I may have gotten, uh, oh, look, Albino Snowman. Then yeah. Play. Albino. <clears throat> yeah, when he mentioned that Christians are in control of every level, um, I <laughs> my mind jumps to a small example, and that's here in my hometown. We have constant atheist propaganda being put up on billboards across my town. Not to mention the stuff you go, you see on Google and in everywhere else. There's not really anything Christian about the modern pop culture. You see sex being slammed against our senses every day on TV. And I know this may be a little bit more conspiracy theory that sounding, but if you just wake up and watch the television, you'll see what I'm talking about. I mean, it's pretty simple. We don't control everything at every level. I don't know where that comes from besides this little victimizing, playing game, trying to garner sympathy sympathy from everybody because we don't. We, granted, we may have some Christian governors at certain places. Uh, Donald Trump, I don't know whether or not he is a Christian. I, that's up for debate. But if you really think that we're in control – then we wouldn't have a lot of the crap that you see in society. We wouldn't be pushing the same exact stuff. In fact, I would vouch that that's more of an atheistic or at least uh, within that range of belief that likes to push that kind of stuff than everybody else. So. Okay, and there are a lot of those atheist beliefs. Deflating atheism, you are next. And then I think we're going to keep rolling. 
Yeah, well, these guys basically said all my points better than I could. But yeah, uh, it was the secular elite who was responsible for promoting guys like Dawkins and Hitchens in the first place over the last 10, 15 years. And uh, and he says that obviously uh, Christians have a numerical advantage in, in American society, but that's not really significant because, I mean, Christians had a numerical advantage in, in pre-revolutionary -re, pre Russia. They had a, a numerical advantage in, in pre-revolutionary France that did not somehow protect them from the from the abuses of anti-theists. Okay, so here's my challenge for Aaron Ra, and then we're going to keep going. He poses a First Amendment expert, uh, uh, defender. Great. Aaron Ra, I ask you now to publicly pledge to tell your fans not to false flag this video, not to come in here making false assertions and slanderous allegations um, and harassing, and to simply address what we have said. At now, and I'm going to ask you to take an anti-censorship position toward red pill religion like other honorable members of your atheist community have done so. And, and after asking you to take that pledge, I'm going to reiterate, I consider you a hateful hate propagandist and a, and a truly evil human being who lies a lot. And I, I also repeat that your fans tend to be routinely the most horrible people on the Internet. And if they're listening, they can bring as many downvotes as they want because I don't like them. Um, they're horrible. And I hope other people will start to tell them they're horrible because they're horrible because you make them horrible because you're a cult leader. Now, please support my First Amendment rights, sir. Prove that you are that kind of man. I don't think you will. Also, I simply note the irony of an atheist pretend, who, who admits he is only 2.32% of the population, pretending he is not posing as a cultural elite who gets to dictate to us what we're supposed to believe. He, he is establishing a threat narrative, treating Christians like the evil Jews uh, in the Nazi would have, the Nazis, uh, Goebbels would have described the evil Jews and the way Stalin described the Jews and, by the way, the Christians and the way Mao described Buddhist monks and, and the temples before they slaughtered millions of people. In other words, this, this free speech advocate is, in fact, a hate propagandist. Uh, no better than a Nazi propagandist, no better than a communist propagandist. I don't particularly care what his views are. He is a hate monger. Please support my First Amendment rights and my free speech rights to say, to, uh, say that about you, Aaron Ra, or explain to me why you will not. Explain that to your fans, too. Um, atheism sucks, by the way. I'm an ex-atheist. Let's go. Another, let's do about another minute or so, everybody. Uh, resetting the hand raising. That's going to happen eventually anyway, and the sooner you all realize that and work with me to defend and promote secular policies before that happens, the better off we'll all be. Those who dismiss Catholics also tend to reject Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Orthodox, and several other denominations too. You include Anglicans, but that's about it, in which case Christianity is only the fourth largest religion. After Islam, then Catholicism, awkward, and even behind Hinduism. Did you know there were more Hindus than there are Baptists, Calvinists, Methodists, Lutherans, and all that put together? Islam is the fastest growing religion, and Muslims already have you all outnumbered almost four to one. How do you feel about your Catholic allies now? The same people who dismiss Catholics as not true Christians also blame atheists for a long list of atrocities against Christians, even when those Christians were Catholics, and their oppressors were not entirely or not necessarily atheists. So they're fudging the numbers on both sides here. Okay. All right. Um, my brain is full of fuck, but Tiger Crusader was the first with a hand raise. So Tiger Crusader, please give us your thoughts on that bunch of madness. Oh, and then Derek, I'm, I'm the gay, gay, gay atheist anarch. I can't gay theist anarchist. I can't keep, he keeps changing it. Anarcho capitalist. Anarcho capitalist. All right. He's second. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tiger. Yeah. Um, when you, when you said that, uh, the oppressors weren't necessarily all atheists. Um, in uh, my case, in, uh, in the cases that we usually mean, which is the Bolshevik atheist oppressing Christians or the, or the French Revolution, yes, they were all atheists. I'm sorry, that's simply the truth. And here's a little statement. I am not saying that all atheists are communists. That would be absolutely ludicrous. However, all communists are atheists. Simple as that. You simply cannot 
be a true communist who has read Marx and studied his philosophy and not be an atheist. Marx was quite clear. Religion is the opiate of the people and it is used by the bourgeoisie in order to keep the proletariat under their heel. If you were religious in any way, shape, or form, Marx considered you a problem, and so did any of his followers. There you go. Very good. Uh, a gay theist. Um, here's the thing, Mr. Nelson. When you just talk about saying that even if they weren't truly atheists, there are just... Okay, first off, I do admit there are ha, there have been times when the religious have persecuted the non-religious or other different religious people. But I would also argue that the people with more blood on the hands are the communists who, for the most part, who are actually, if they are actual Marxists, they believe in no God. They are atheists. And they have more blood on their hands than I would argue in a shorter amount of time than the religious persecution that's happening, including Islam, including Christian persecution of different beliefs, including Jew, Jew persecution of the Christians, Roman persecution of the Christians, etc. Yeah, okay. And uh, did anybody else have anything they wanted? Yeah. Um... Brass, go ahead, man. Yeah, I just wanted to say, like, you know, I love how he just kind of wants to, like, do this whole, um, like, this whole, oh, look at you guys. You guys can't decide on who's a Christian, and you guys can't decide on what is it. And, like, how many Christians there are does not really affect the validity of Christianity. Christianity could only have 3,000 members, but if Jesus really did rise from the dead, that would... That would still be true, regardless of how many there are. And, you know, I'd also like to point out that at one point, you know, in ancient Greek, there were more slaves than there were free citizens. But I would think you'd be hard pressed to say that just because the slaves held the majority of the people, that somehow they were not oppressed. I, uh, I, I want to point out a book here. Tiger Crusader is always saying I should not promote Vox Day. We have a lot of reasons to view Vox Day with suspicion. However, in this particular book, his statistics are impeccable, so it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, I mean, I can, from from a Christian perspective, I consider the man a heretic, and his politics are, are fringe. But his data is quite good, and he makes it very clear that um, atheist regimes are more dangerous than Islam, and we've got the data to back that up. And so, you know, I'll stand by the data that he publishes there. If anybody wants to refute it, let me know. Um, uh, Robert Free, do you want her to say something? Yeah, so I don't get is that um, Aaron Ra goes into this whole spiel about the no true Scotsman fallacy and, you know, who's, you know, and why Christians can't agree who's a true Christian or not a true Christian. And I'm, as I'm watching that, I'm thinking like, what the fuck does this have to do with anything, especially relating to, quote unquote, atheist states? <laughs> this seems to be like just a, you know, red herring. In my opinion. Yeah, um, absolutely. And listen, I mean, the thing is, is that while you can find atheists left, right, and center, and you can find uh, Christians left, right, and center, you might get a controversial firebrand radical like a Vox Day. Uh, mm -hmm. You might get somebody much more, uh, much more orthodox. If you look at Alexander Solzhenitsyn and, the, and read the Gulag Archipelago and read more of Solzhenitsyn, the repression of religion and religious people is uh, undeniably a huge part of the history of these regimes, and it's always at the hand of militant atheists who talk like you, sir. All right, we're resetting the hand raising. Go ahead. Somebody missed. Did I miss somebody? Where are you seeing? I have a question. Are you seeing the hand raising? Okay. On the hand raising, just if you can't use our chat room, some of you can't seem to make it to the chat room, you're going to have to shout out hand raise, and I'm going to have to hear you. What chat room? The Google chat hangout chat room that we're all in. You have to either get to Google hangout chat and use that or just yell. Okay. So I'm looking at it right now. 
Okay. Yeah, oh well. Don't do tech support over the line. So just yell and it, when you want to raise your hand, and we'll Sounds keep. Good. All righty. That's what makes these claims propaganda. That they are both biased and deliberately misleading. Like you. For example, the reign of yep. terror during the French Revolution was aimed at Catholics specifically, not the Protestant Huguenots or Lutherans or even the Jews who were also there. Well, it was aimed it against okay. Catholicism because revolutionaries saw the Catholic Church as their oppressors, which of course they were and oh. had been for centuries. And while there were some atheists in the French Revolution, most, including Napoleon, were deists. Well, let's not forget that after deposing theocratic rule of the Catholic Church, the state then mandated a belief in the deistic version of the supreme being. That's still God, so you can't call them atheists. Likewise, Christians blame atheists for murdering tens of thousands of religious believers in the Paris Commune of 1871, but that's not what happened either. Again, Catholic clergy gave authority to the monarchy and therefore had to be deposed along with them. But this was an entirely political conflict in which religious believers were never targeted, nor atheists implicated as the aggressors. At least some of those rebels were Christian, and fewer than a thousand people were reportedly killed in total. Robert raised his hand. Go ahead. Okay, okay we're, we're going to get again. Oh, 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 I'm echoing. Echoing. Try again. Or, okay, where to begin with this clusterfuck right here? So he says that, you know, the French revolutionaries targeted, targeted quote-unquote Catholicism, but not any other Christian sect. First of all, France was 90% Catholic, so what the fuck? What the fuck? And most of the Huguenots had, you know, fled to England beforehand due to some sectarian conflicts. And then he says, oh, the Catholic Church were the oppressors. Sorry, France was reforming at that time before, even before the French Revolution. Like uh, he mentioned, he may even mention this later mm -hmm. when he talks about, you know, the French monarchy um, passed what was known as the Edict of Tolerance. So, and then he goes into the Paris Commune, which I agree, you know, has no, almost nothing to do, and I feel like that's a separate issue in itself. And then um, he goes on to Napoleon. You know, he talks about Napoleon being a Deus. Which is true, but he came much, much later in like the early 1800s. And, you know, I feel like that's a bit of another chapter to talk about, too. And then he tries to say, oh, you know, they had the cult of the spring being, which is true. However, there was also the great, the larger cult of reason, which was, um, which lasted um, far longer and was um, far more promoted by the French Revolutionary government. The cult of the spring being was only um, promoted like the last two months of, um, of the reign of terror period. Reign of Terror, I can't speak. The Reign of Terror period. So, <laughs> like, this was a clusterfuck of bad history right here. Really, seriously, I mean it. This this man is a hate propagandist. There's. I had hands in case you didn't see it. Who, oh, who had their hand up? I did also. Oh, I. Really? I don't see it showing up. Okay, I apologize. Go ahead, Brass. Well, the reign of terrors was a rebellion against the monarchy, not to Catholicism in general. In fact, King Henry VIII oppressed the Catholic Church and tried everything to undermine its power, like having clergy swear to him and not And the, uh, the Catholic Church wasn't this big mega house of power back then and was never a theocracy, and it was instead a constitutional monarchy in which state religion was established by law. There's a huge difference. The revolution came under Jacques Hibbert, who is stated to be who is stated to be an atheist, although there is historians that go back and forth on that. As you know, as Robert mentioned, you know, Baron Klutz, you know, and his run in the cult of reason. And also he fails to mention that the whole deistic God being insta instated was a moderate decision because ultimately they wanted to do away with the concept altogether and they figured deism was at least the, the next best thing to atheism the goal was to um get rid of the catholic church and the monarchy and to rid and to de-christianize things but included the rape and murder of quite a few uh priests and nuns and quite a few horrors all in the name of of you know, again, a lot, we can't have the conversation and talk about what the church may have done wrong, you know, because any admission of guilt on our part, <clears throat> just they just run with. It's uh, victim blaming. 
It is all victim blaming, actually, because it's not that anybody thinks the church was perfect. Go ahead, Brass. Oh, all right. not Brass. I'm I'm sorry, Engine. Engine. My apologies. I'm sorry if I'm getting out of control with the queue, guys. So, I mean, if I've missed you, go ahead and speak up. But, 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 Engine, go ahead. As the church had no powers in commune from the default, and nor had any means to counter it violently, the deposition argument by Aaron Ross is uh, yet another grasp of straws. The real reason was that the commune was always hostile to the church due to its very left wing policies, akin to some, some found in communism. Yeah, I and that, that, um, Rob Spear was a deist, but by that time nobody cared, which is why the Festival of the Supreme Being was a failure, one of the reasons. And uh, Danton reconciled with his uh, Catholicism, but by then he already turned against the Committee of Public Safety. And, you know, in at least one case, a group of militant atheists stormed a church, you know, um, beat the crap out of and severely uh, injured if, if they didn't kill any... Uh, worshippers that were alive, they put a naked wom uh, woman up on the altar and said, "Hail, goddess of mm -hmm. reason!" Um, and you know they were worshippers of science, um, and they were murderous. And they, <clears throat> they talked like you, sir. Did anybody else have anything to add before we keep going? The I do. The I do. Go ahead. Um. Uh, yeah. The thing of it is, the most aggressive pushers for the dechristianization campaign were people like Joseph Fouch, um, Jock Hebert, and, you know, among others. And in the Vendée, this was something I forgot to mention, in the Vendée region, there, there had been an uprising to the um, anti-religious policies of the French revolutionary government, and it was brutally repressed almost to near genocidal levels. Um, Google, any, anyone who ever gets the time, research the Vendée Revolt. Um, rev yeah, the um, Catholic rebels... Huh? Yeah, the policies of commune was to be enacted. The policies of yeah, yeah. to be enacted needed suppression of religious values that were in stark contrast to its own. Yeah, and yeah, that, and one of the and hence under a week after its establishment, the commune voted a decree accusing the Catholic Church of complicity in the crimes of the monarchy. Yeah, and um, what was I going to say? Yeah, and one of the most brutal commanders in the Vendée um, re um revolt was a um was a representative on mission named um, Jean Baptiste Carrier, and he was a part member of the Hibertese faction, which was the most, which was the atheistic faction, and he was one of the most brutal commanders of the French rev revolutionary um, regime in the Vendée. And the estimates for the total number killed were um, somewhere between two hundred and three hundred and fifty thousand um, killed in the Vendée. And once there was also um, death squads known as internal um, columns which were went around you know destroying villages and killing ransacking and killing people and then there was also the mass drownings at nantes where re revolutionary forces would um tie um two catholics together in mass drownings these were known as republican marriages and they did um and they would tie them tie them together naked and drown them and they the reason why they did that was was because they knew it would humiliate their Catholic faith, faith by doing that before killing them. Okay, I have Tiger Crusaders next. If I missed anybody, uh, be sure to yell out, I apologize, I'm doing my best. Don't feel bad, you know, like I'm ignoring you. Yell if I missed anybody. But Tiger Crusader, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to show, the, like, I, like I'm just going to go out on a limb here, and he's going to say that communism had nothing to do with atheism or that they weren't true atheists or something like that. Well, I'm going to screen share for a second right now. Uh, let me... Uh, there we go. And here I have uh, an article. And what you're seeing right now is a file from the official archive of the Romanian Communist Party. And what you're seeing on this file says, Notes, Informations, and Proposals seeing the activity of of atheist scientific education of the masses january december 1969 and here are some other things um this is uh, an official um this is an official uh party sanctioned book called the path of the atheist 
uh, what is sin, which pretty much, which spoiler alert, pretty much says do whatever you want because there is no God law. And amazing. Uh, amazing. And this is right here, which was supposed to be like uh, this uh, was portrayed as a conversation, quote unquote, between uh, uh, Christians and atheists. It's called the Bible for the faithful and the unfaithful. And here in the first picture, you see with the old man smoking a pipe and uh, striking a match up his ass. It's supposed to be God saying, let there be light. Uh, the second one with the man floating up with the balloons is supposed to be uh, the patriarch Enoch uh, rising up to the skies. You get the point. And this was all, uh, this was all party sanctioned. And here's another book, uh, party sanctioned, science and atheism. And here you can see that the representative of science is a cosmonaut and the representative of, uh, of uh, Christianity is uh, our Ku Klux Klan members. Which so are, are the was this during Ceausescu or is this earlier? Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really yeah, sure. Almost any time, really, because this is typical atheist propaganda. In fact, the conflating of science and atheism is standard communist propaganda. Just so anybody and listening here, knows. By the way, we will be archiving this show immediately after it's done and plan on getting our content up on torrent uh, just to avoid atheists to censor us. I hope Aaron Ra will come forward in favor of our First Amendment rights. And oh, and um, anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. This is a uh, if uh, you can still see my screen share. It might be a bit difficult to see, but right here you can see a full list of the uh, atheist of the official atheist books sanctioned uh, by the party that were assailing me. Here you can see Amazing. by by Marx about religion. Vladimir Lenin about religion, uh, and it keeps on going. These are all the party-sanctioned books that were promoting atheism, and it just keeps on going. And the total number is, let me see, 160, but it might be a lot higher. No, I actually, sorry, it's 184. I, you're going to send me, make sure I have the link so I can add that to the low bar and to the blog notes, right? Uh, yeah, I think I already sent it to you, but I'm going to send it to you on uh, Discord. Make sure we have it so that everybody can go check it themselves. Aaron Ra, you're full of crap, and you're, I will repeat, your fans are some of the nastiest people on the internet. They're horrible. Um, uh, deflating Atheism wanted to speak. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, just to uh, 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 connect this, this kind of uh, old atheist uh, propaganda with, with newer atheist propaganda. If you guys remember the trailer of the Richard Dawkins, Lawrence Krauss road movie, The Unbelievers. That was it, pure propaganda. It was pure propaganda, and when they wanted to show a, a representative of atheism, they showed the wonders of science. When they wanted to show religion, uh, they showed uh, uh, ISIS. Well, this is actually pre-ISIS, but this is like Al Qaeda. So that's that's pure propaganda. Propaganda is what you don't say. They framed the issue in terms of science versus terrorism. That that is your choice between between atheism and religion, and it's identical to to the kinds of propaganda when they had Ku Klux Klansmen uh, uh, being the representatives of religion. Now we've moved on to having Al Qaeda being the representatives of religion. And they brought celebrities in to, um, or to appeal to the public. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I kind of have to go. I just re uh, I just got a message uh, from Frank. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, hey, longer. Yeah, we we love we love you. Come on by anytime, brother. Of course. Bye bye. Now bye. Um, we're going to move on to get another moment, minute or so of this. Um, and so let's see what we can do. I have so much more I can say to this man, but let's just give him another minute or so of this. Then when the Bolsheviks took over the Russian Empire, their Red Army was pitted against the White Army, being a collection of Tsarists, Republican liberals, there's a concept, and Russian Orthodox, which American Protestants only consider Christian when it's convenient for their persecution complex. The Bolsheviks oh. did kill a bunch of Orthodox along with many other people, and they did this with the assistance of Muslim mercenaries. Again, not in the name of atheism, obviously, but because the church supported their enemies in the white movement. 
If you're opposed to the Tsar, who was backed by the Russian Orthodox Church, then the Church was your enemy too. The new Russian state did seek to eliminate religion after that, and they thought they could do this by removing the fear on which faith is apparently based. But at that time, the majority of Soviet citizens were still openly religious. Even after the communists established state atheism, most organized religions were never outlawed, and people were still allowed to carry religious and anti-religious materials. Oh, my goodness gracious, gracious. I don't believe this man for a second defends the First Amendment at all, but... All right, let's see who had their hand up first. Why it would be Tiger Crusader. Go ahead, Tiger Crusader. Yeah, when he said that uh, that religion was never outlawed in the Soviet state or that uh, religious people weren't persecuted, just what the actual fuck? Like, I know he has probably never read a book about the Soviet persecution of Christians, but when you get the accusation, oh, Soviets were atheists who persecuted Christians, then maybe you should look into it a little bit. And it's just... Uh, I mean, I can, you had... Go ahead. And they were... And, uh, or the, and the, the orthodoxy, the Russian orthodoxy that was during the Tsarist period was outlawed. Uh, absolutely. There was a... There was uh, something like the Nazis' positive Christianity uh, for the communists. I'm not, I don't exactly remember how it was called. But basically, uh, you had these uh, party-sanctioned priests that said that uh, religion is pointless and that we've reached a point in which we share everything with our fellow man, that we don't need religion anymore, and, right. that we, and all that sort of nonsense. That was what positive Christianity basically was, and I just wanted to put that out there. That was the Nazi version of Christianity. He'll get, he'll get to the Nazis later. Yeah, it, it was basically Nazi Christianity that was imposed on people. That was atheism. Anyway, I had, I had hands also. Okay, go ahead then, Injun. Uh, atheism is the natural and inseparable part of communism. Lenin. The party cannot be neutral towards religion. And it conducts anti-religious propaganda against all religious prejudices because it stands for science. Because all religion is the antithesis of science. Stalin. Religion poisons everything. Mao. So yeah, it, dogmatic atheism was a central tenet to communism, and it, it just, which is what actual historians and even atheist historians will tell you this. Okay. Uh, and 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 here's a memoir from a Romanian soldier invading the Soviet Union, World War II. <clears throat> we have found the place where the church of the small town Krozov was. It was now a cinema with crude concrete statue of Lenin in the yard. Even the crosses on the gravestones have been knocked down, replaced with simple stone tablets. The huge cross that was once the centerpiece of that massive structure was now in the basement, purposefully put upside down. Our division priests invited the citizens during Sunday service to the troops. All the older men and women had tears in their eyes. One older man fell to his knees and began sobbing like a child as he saw the icon of the Virgin Mary. He said that he hadn't seen one in 20 years. The Bolsheviks had burned his icons, his crosses, and even his Bible and prayer books in front of him. They hadn't heard a service in 20 years, even if they had to hear it through a translator who only spoke a rather broken Russian. Our four priests have baptized 40 children this week. We allowed some of the Russian prisoners to listen to the service. They were looking like broken from a trance. The bellowing mad red dogs were now staring into nothingness as they heard the holy word. They too began to sob as they realized the lie they had been living under. Make, uh, make sure we have a link to that engine. All right, Robert F. Okay. What, what, the, where the fuck does he get the, the idea that they employed Muslim mercenaries to persecute Russian Orthodox Christians? What the fuck? He's just trying to pr pass it up on the Muslims? No, you could Google, Google, Wikipedia, any of the Soviet anti-religious campaigns. You may believe they're biased, uh, Max, but I think they're pretty accurate. And they will talk about how it, it became publicly it became dangerous really dangerous to become associated with religion because one of two things could happen to you you could either get executed or you get sent to the gulags where you would die of frost due to you know the hard labor 
and um geez what was the other thing i was gonna say um it was damn see this idiot made me lose my train of thought i'm grabbing a straws um, about the russian orthodox church that's all right you'll remember oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah there was some yeah okay according to alexander yakovilev um an estimated two hundred thousand russian orthodox clerics were shot by the regime so, and this doesn't include the hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of, you know, Russian Orthodox lady that were killed by the Soviet regime. So, fuck off, you revisionists. I remind so, you. Also, also, I like to know the political motive behind forcing uh, priests and nuns to fuck each other while forcing them to sing pornographic songs of the Virgin Mary and taking part in communion with a feces and piss. Yeah, I'd like to, I'd really like to know that myself. Okay. And, you know, uh, well, wait. Okay, I raised my hand too. Okay, wait a minute. Well, it's, it's between you and Albino, and I think Albino was before you because I, I, I'm sorry, I All can't right. tell. Uh, I do want to make one comment, which is that Wikipedia is not reliable. It's on any given page, you might have good info and you might have trash, and half the time you have to already know the subject to tell whether it's one or the other. But if you've investigated a page and you know its information is solid, then fine. Be sure you've gotten us a link to that. Um, I really do believe Albino Snowman's hand was up first. Go ahead, Albino, and then I'll get to you, Braz. Well, I, I would agree completely and deposit every, exactly what everybody else is saying. And I also have to add a quote from Emilian Yaroslavsky. And this, he's the founder of the Mil League of the Militant Godless. It is our duty to destroy every religious world concept. If the destruction of 10 million human beings, as happened in the last war, should be necessary for the triumph of one definite class, then that must be done, and it will be done. Yep. Well, you know, I would also, again, in the Orthodox Christian, in the Russian Orthodox Christian tradition, there are the new martyrs, and I would. I would, I would vouch, I would, I would suggest that you read some of the stories and historical accounts of those who were killed and what they had to see. Um, I had a good site pulled up, but it, I guess it just got lost. But again, Everybody make sure to get me any links you wanted as soon as the show is over. Send me any link that you have if I don't already have it, and I'll make sure it gets included. You must send it to me directly so I'll know that I've gotten it. Okay. So, all right, I have, I have brass. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a bit ludicrous to say that the persecution was solely for the fact that they backed the wrong political opponent. Because, you know, in 1939, only 500 out of the originally 50,000 churches remained opened. Is he seriously going to say that every single one of the, like, that only 500, only about 500 of those churches were conveniently not for the SAR. You know, it's ridiculous. They obviously did persecute them. And it was they weren't outlawed because trying to outlaw something right away that a majority of the population participated in would be impossible to maintain. So rather they chose to do it slowly and hope that over time with the indoctrination of, you know, of communist propaganda in school that they would do it. You know, they were not dumbasses. They knew outlawing it right away would, would be nearly impossible to enforce because as you Oh, you're broken up a little bit then. So, I mean, they the whole thing was is to de-Christianize it and indoctrinate and do it slowly over time which would be the smartest thing to do if you were in any um if you were trying to um set your beliefs on them yeah but you're going to get an eventual pushback now I, I i apologize to everybody if i'm not doing the best job i am trying my best um uh, we're going to go ahead and keep moving from this point i see robert's got his hand up so he can go Sorry. first if i'm missing anybody if i'm missing anybody just walk okay because i'm just doing my best i'm not that good at this um all right here we go even stalin who was raised religious himself allowed the russian orthodox church to resume at least some of its former position in the community and i'm not okay. defending stalin by any means he was a vicious idiot who rejected darwinian selection in favor of lamarckian lysenkoism 
And he was a monster responsible for a whole lot of inhuman atrocities, some against Christians for various reasons, but also against lots of other people too, behavior that sane people consider unconscionable. Pol Pot was another rocket surgeon who had people murdered because they wore glasses, because he thought that only smart people wear them. So he thought anyone with glasses was smarter than him, which you know they probably were, and he thought that made them dangerous. So he had them all killed. The man was a homicidal moron reacting out of fear. Atheism is a smart position to take for many reasons, but being atheist doesn't make you smart. That's why I personally advocate rational education and scientific skepticism and promote humanist values. Just because you're atheist doesn't huh. make you rational or skeptical or educated. Your mere lack of belief in gods doesn't automatically make you a humanist, I'm sorry to say. Okay, whatever. Oh, my goodness gracious. Sir, you miseducate people on science. Okay. Uh, Ro uh, Robert, I said you could go next, and then we're going to have John Baptiste. So we I, have, I have hands also. Okay, then it's going to be it's going to be Robert. Then it's going to be John Baptiste. Then it's going to be uh, 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 Engine Robert. Go ahead, Robert. Bull shit! Bull fucking shit! That what he said there was a load of. Shit, so bigger that oh my god! When he said that Stalin allowed you know the Russian Orthodox Church to operate to quote unquote some degree or whatever he said, that is just not true. No, as I said before, Alexander Yakovlev, who was the head of the Presidential Commission for the Victims of the Repression in Russia, estimated that two hundred thousand Russian Orthodox clerics were sh were killed by the Soviet regime. Not to mention hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions were killed by the um, Soviet regime as well. And it became publicly it became dangerous to be publicly associated with religion in the 1920s and 30s during the um, Stalin-Lenin regime. So no, and he, he wants to talk about Paul, Pol Pot too. Oh, I have, I have personal experience with this because my ex who is still a close friend to me, she, her, she is the daughter of Khmer Rouge genocide survivors. Her parents went through that fucking bullshit. And yeah, they killed a lot of people for different reasons, like the glasses, you know, the infamous glasses thing he, he talks about. But they also killed a shit ton of religious people too, specifically Buddhists and Muslims. There was actually a sizable number of Muslims in Cambodia too that were killed. They were forced to eat pork a lot of times and then were just killed anyway, even, even if they did comply. And, you know, you know, and my ex, see, ah, my ex-girlfriend, um, her parents witnessed some of this shit. They witnessed the persecution of Buddhists who um, tried to practice their faith but would be killed. They witnessed their clerics being um, killed. In fact, um, here's a dot. Um, this is from the Khmer Rouge. Um, here, here's a quotation from the Khmer Rouge. Quote, religion was feudal and oppressive and monks were useless parasites. Le leeches living off the blood of the people. And, and during this rate, during that. Yeah, during this period, virtually every Buddhist monk were, was killed off by the regime. It's uh, really, really quite unconscionable. And truly, truly, this, is, this man is a hate propagandist. I would like to refer people to, our, uh, to the book, The New Atheist Denial of History by Professor Gordon W. Painter, who we have interviewed and who, who's an expert on this sort of thing. This this truly truly is hate propaganda. Next we have John Baptiste, then Tiger Crusader, and scream if we're missing you. I'm doing my best, uh, Jean Baptiste. Got to move a little faster there, Jean Baptiste. Stalin was was quoted um, as as several times as using. Darwin's uh, origin of man um, as as a recruitment tool into atheism. Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, I would like to know his sources on that. And yeah, it's it's my mind is full of fuck listening to this because here's the thing: this man is a paid professional. He has he's not confused. He's not confused. This is why it's really hard for me not to uh, be angry listening to this. Okay, I have Injun next. Go ahead, Injun. No one, um, he was talking to Stalin 
he said that Stalin rejected Darwinian evolution when that was what made him an atheist in the first place. He said, um, <clears throat> this guy wrote in his journal that um, Comrade Stalin developed a critical mind and revolutionary sentiments. He began to read Darwin and became an atheist. He said, I began to speak of God. Joseph heard me out and after a moment of silence said, you know what? They're fooling us. There is no God. I was astonished at these words. I had never heard anything like it before. How can you say such things, so-so? I exclaimed. I'll lend you a book to read. It will show you that the world and all living things are quite different from what you imagine. And all this talk about God is sheer nonsense, Joseph said. What book is that? I inquired. Darwin, you must read it, Joseph impressed on me. I... Uh, yeah, my mind is just full of it. Now, if I've missed anybody, let me know. I just couldn't. Yeah. I, okay, hang on a second. I just couldn't. Now that you mentioned, I just wanted to riff on this real quick. Did you notice how he basically attacks Stalin's character for having the wrong theory of evolution? I key on this obsession like, oh, Lamarck, he, you know, he was flawed because he believed in Lamarckianism, not, you know. And, and the truth of it is, how creepy weird is that, right? This. This judges your character based on what your position on evolution is currently. Here's a neat book, by the way, called Explore Evolution, The Arguments For and Against Neo-Darwinism. You see, um, um, Aaron Ra, like a lot of atheists, is an advocate for neo-Darwinism. And here's a book of, of a whole bunch of stuff on a bunch of challenges to the theory, purely scientific theories, too. Oh, hold, on, hold on. Before each straw man says, none of us are young earth creationists. Not a single one of us here is young earth creationists. I don't even like the creationist label. Just, you know, God is what's running the laws of probability in physics. So he can, you know, easily have arranged things however he wanted on the physical level. It's just there's no conflict with my view of, of God, um, which is basically the the orthodox Christian view of God. Okay, um, I'm sorry, Injun, it was your turn? Already went. Okay, then I believe it is, yeah, I believe it is Tiger. All right. Oh, yeah, sorry, I, uh, I missed you there. Oh, that's all right. Should we just move on then? Oh, I mean, uh, I mean, but if, if Tiger uh, wants to... All right, wait a minute. Mr. Brass had something. You can go next time, Tiger. That's all right. Uh, Brass? All right. I just wanted to say, like, the fact that um, Stalin was brought up religious means nothing. If you killed me because I happen to believe in God, would you think a valid objection would be to say, well, Aaron was raised religious. The whole legislation guarantee that you had the right to any religion was more or less a joke. Because they were essentially saying, yes, you can adhere to your religion, but we will oppress you if you actually adhere to one. And I, I, Go ahead. And I'd also say that Stalin's choice of um, Lysenkoism had more or less to do with his detrust of Western science and the fact that it conformed to the ideology of communism and the fact that Lysenko himself was a perfect lapdog to him. He was an idiot for different reasons. He wanted the science to conform to his beliefs and not his beliefs to his science. Most new atheists are raised religious. This is so true. Okay, we're going to keep going. But I wonder if... They're, they're, raised, they're raised fundamentalist households. Well, no, because some, some wind up raised Catholic or Orthodox. And actually, the ones who are raised Orthodox turn... You know, but, I mean, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, yeah, most atheists... A lot of atheists are raised Christian. I guess we can just count them as not true atheists anymore too right i mean holy oh, yeah. cow. um oh and one more thing like you know he says atheism is a smart position for many reasons like, <laughs> what are these reasons i mean what are these reasons exactly generally a lot of the supposed reasons come down to the problem of evil <clears throat> the universe isn't how i would have designed it therefore it wasn't and the whole if you were born in x place you would be now you know yeah. And while it was back then, it was. You're really cutting off there, Brass. You keep getting cut off. So I'm going to have to ask you to check your mic and we're just going to go on. He, he, did say, what, what, he did say a sensible thing that being an atheist doesn't make you smart, and yeah. being a Christian doesn't make you stupid. 
Well, I mean, I didn't notice that. And earlier he said atheists are only 2% or 2.3% or what the percent was, 2% 2 and change. He said that. And then he also... But, 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 but he also said that he promotes a rationalism and reason, which he doesn't. He's a Christ myth a third-way feminist and an atheism plus shell. So he hates all atheists who don't agree with his politics. Basically, he's an elitist of one who knows right from wrong. And even if you have the wrong theory of evolution, not just, you know... You believe in evolution, but you, you believe something wrong about evolution. You're a bad person. It's very weird. And, you, you know, like he's just kind of drawing himself with his ideology and those who are exactly like him as if they are the default rational persons and they can say right from wrong and no one else can. This, by the way, is why I do like to say that atheists are dangerous people and that you should not give them power. Anti-theists. And, and, well, I don't know. When, when they are so callous towards us... This man would almost certainly torture me and my child. I have no doubt Max, that he would. Max, Max, can I say it, something? Go ahead. Um, the thing of it is, don't say atheist. Say militant atheist or anti-theist. Uh, Do not take your anger out on any innocent All right, atheist. fine. Militant atheists. Take your anger on this button. All right, fine. But militant atheists rocking the capital A who do not denounce Aaron Ra are people who I consider enablers of this sort of vicious hate propaganda. And it's like, why should I, as a religious man who cares about his Jewish friends, who cares about his Hindu friends, yes, even has some Muslim friends and cares about them, cares about his Mormon friends, um, uh, cares about his friends who are not religious but think there's a God, um, uh, cares about even which friends. I, I consider this guy uh, really dangerous to me and my child. And, and people in the atheist community who won't step away from him are why I have such rage towards him, to, towards this community. And I fully admit, I have what I consider anger toward the online atheist community. I'd really like to know if the Great Debate community would host a debate between me and Aaron Ra on whether or not religious people of any stripe should be expected to tolerate the presence of hate mongers like Aaron Ra. That's not even an ironic question. Why All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right. Why should we tolerate these people? I'm not saying do anything. I, I want them to answer the question. I mean, what are the limits of the tolerance that we should have from people who spit at us this way? All right. Let's go. Just like it doesn't make you communist either. Likewise, just because you're Christian doesn't necessarily mean you're a willfully ignorant, racist, end times dominionist, young earth creationist, like or a paranoid, pistol packing stuff. pedophile. You could be a Christian and a communist at the same time. Many people historically have been and still are. But the propagandists among you have assumed that if I'm atheist, that means I'm socialist, which it doesn't, and they don't know the difference between socialist and communist because those descriptions are complicated and the people I'm talking about aren't. They're definitely prone to false dichotomies and one-dimensional lines of thought without any consideration of nuance. But because the only government to ever promote state atheism was communist, then regardless of the circumstances in each particular case, any violent conflict between communists and almost anyone else is misrepresented as an attack on Christians by atheists, regardless whether those communists were exclusively or even predominantly atheists. Since none of this was actually done in the name of atheism, there's no no way to know. You're, you're, oh, God. Okay, by the way, I'm actually going to call it right now um, that I really do believe the background pattern here is meant to have a numbing uh, hypnotic effect on his cultish followers, and I will repeat my observation. By the way, Aaron Ra, I, I challenge you again to defend my First Amendment rights, please, and stand against censorship. Even as I say, you're a cult leader who brainwashes your followers, including using cheap hypnosis techniques while you lie about history for them and just you know, expect them not to be at all critical of you or skeptical of any of these things you're saying. And you, know, you brainwash them so they don't even seek out sources that might be skeptical of you. Now, um, the first person's hand up was Tiger, and then I saw Robert. So Tiger, take it away, sir. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just, just when he said, uh, <sighs> but anyway, when he just said it wasn't done in the name of atheism, uh, do I need to show you the books again, which were which uh, were officially called by the Communist Party atheist scientific indoctrination slash propaganda? Like this isn't me saying it; they literally called it scientific atheist. Um, 
propaganda because back then propaganda wasn't really a bad word. And he and just saying that, well, not every Christian is a racist, xenophobic, like fuck off. Like he sounds like such a fucking SJW, which he is considering that he's a feminist and saying that he's not a socialist, even though he's a feminist and every single feminist uh, or at least modern feminist uh, uh, movement I've seen absolutely demands socialist-like uh, action against the patriarchy and bullshit like that. Like just like I I I would I I swear I would remain professional throughout this, but just just fuck off. Like you're a condescending, lying prick. There, I said it. I turned into Max. Well, I, I tell you, I well, here's my theory on that. And I was taught to taught to swear by a priest and a very good man. Um, and they'll tell you, you know, you don't want to swear in front of people. Um, uh, you know, women don't like it, um, but among men, it's pretty much okay as long as you know you're not completely blaspheming. There's Christians who don't like it, but there's others who will defend it. This is an audience. This is actually a man who does swear in order to. to uh, impress his audience and he, he he speaks to a subculture where swearing is normal especially young men which is why i do it because the audience i want here is primarily young men and they seem to think that if you're a christian you're a womp, you're a wimp and you can't swear um and there are some christians who will say that and yes actually i would say habitually swearing is a bad idea but there does come a point where sometimes uh, it's the only thing your audience will hear and, and, and the scripture is full of pungent language towards terrible people, calling them pigs and dogs and swine and asses and, and, and quite a few other things besides. Um, uh, so I think that if pungent language is what they need to hear, it's like a drill sergeant or a coach or what else. Listen, guys, we're not afraid of you and we're not afraid of tough language. You're, you're a fucking liar, sir, a professional liar. Now, please defend my First Amendment rights when I say that about you. And when I repeat how horrible and abusive and nasty your fans tend to be. I'd really like to know, would the debate, great debate community like us to let us challenge Aaron Raw, uh, debate the proposition, whether he is, in fact, a cult leader and, uh, you know, a hate propagandist. Can anybody else have a hand up or should we keep going? I did, uh, I did. Okay, Robert, go ahead. He always does. He's so anxious. Oh, okay. so we, yeah, yeah. So he mentions um quote unquote Christian communism. Here's a big fucking red red um, newsletter. Christian communism and religious communism wasn't really a fucking thing in the twentieth century and isn't now. Yeah, there's some weirdos, but you know, those kind of people always exist who try to reconcile different ideologies and world world yeah, world views together. Sorry, that just isn't the case. And by the way, um, Aaron Aaron Raw, the revisionist. Did you know Richard Spencer, the leader of the alt right, white nationalist alt right, is an atheist? Shock too. And here's the thing too, going back to the whole religious communism thing. Mongolia did have. They did try to. Um, they did try to have this thing in Mongolia where they um, had Buddhist communism. It didn't work out because then Stalin uh, um, overthrew the previous quasi-socialist leader, um, killed him, and instituted a man named Choibosan, who went on to brutally repress the Buddhist mo the the Buddhist monasteries and religion there, and killed many of the lamas and believers. So piss off. All right. Well, we've been going a little while, but we might as well just push through and finish this thing, even if we go a ways. We are going to have to archive copies of this right away. I do recommend mirrors. I expect false flag attempts. Maybe just my calling it out will make it less likely. But uh, let's go ahead and play a little more of this. And whether any of them were actually atheists is largely irrelevant. And it's not just communists who are categorized this way either. Socialists are conflated with communists too, and thus labeled atheists, even if they're practicing Christians. Jesus himself was a socialist. That don't make him atheist or violent either. It was never about atheists hunting Christians because they are Christians. That's just a persecution fantasy. While atrocious horrors are often committed in the name of God and religion, and violent mobs have reacted to that, especially when imposed by the ruling class, 
no such riots were ever committed in the name of what they don't believe. Religion is not the only ideology one can believe in that can incite violence. Authoritarianism has particular <laughs> appeal to the worst people ever, regardless yeah, whether they believe in a god or not, especially when followers. that becomes totalitarianism. I was always told not to talk about religion or politics in order that I obviously didn't obey. Because of that, I've discovered that the only thing less rational than religion is politics. And I've seen that atheists would sooner form alliances with politically compatible believers than tolerate political differences among fellow infidels. You can still believe in political ideologies and act horribly in their behalf, regardless whether you also believe in religion. So I, I, I can't even untangle that. Uh, I, I see deflating atheism's hand up first. Go ahead, sir. If anybody else needs in, raise your hand. Well, he, he actually stumbles on something that's half right. It's like no, nobody uh, uh, undertakes a project because of what they don't believe. But uh, you wouldn't be making videos if you merely lacked a belief in God. You make videos because you think religion is this malefic force, which is precisely the belief that motivated uh, these anti-theistic regimes to torture, imprison, and execute you know, hundreds of thousands of, of people, of religious believers and clerics. Absolutely. In fact, as a religious man, sir, and a former atheist, I... I, I I genuinely want to know. This is one I would pitch at the great debate community too. Should I not consider you an enemy? Should I not consider you, uh, you know, an enemy to my family and a, a threat to my children? Why should I not? Why is that unreasonable? Can you explain it to me? Can can you know without being too rude? Can anybody at the great debate community explain it to me? Is anybody over there willing to debate this question with me? Why should religious people not see men like this as a threat to them? And a threat to their safety and to their freedom. I would like to know why we should not. That's all. It's just a philosophical question. Uh, uh, Robert, what did you want to say? By the way, the gay atheist, anarchist, and uh, uh, also uh, uh, Tiger. Tiger had to leave, and so we thank them both. Uh, Tiger, our Romanian Orthodox Christian friend, and gay atheist anarchist, our gay atheist anarchist friend. He's a good friend. I, I keep forgetting his tag because I just know him by his first name. We chat all the time. He's a good friend. He's a good kid. Okay, anyway, Robert. Okay, so he, he tries to pull Jesus was a socialist crap. Um, sorry, no, he was not a socialist. He doesn't even believe that's he existed. Really, Injun, please, I'm speaking. Um, that, that's a really broad definition of socialism, if, he, if he's going to define it as that. Jesus certainly was for helping the poor, but sorry, socialism. Socialists can't claim a monopoly on that. Jesus also liked people who liked to innovate and, you know, he liked, um, I guess you could say capitalism as well, if that's the case. Because there's a story where Jesus gives um, these people a certain amount of money. I'm really butchering it, too, because it's been a long time since I've been in church. <laughs> but he gives um, money to certain people to um, go invest and improve themselves. And anyway, there's like um, four of them. Three of them, I believe, I do that. They in, they invest in you know, they make a lot of um, money and whatnot. And there's one that doesn't. He just puts it in the um, dirt or you know buries it. He comes back um, later, and Jesus is really unimpressed with the one that did not use his money for anything. I think it's the parable of the t talents. I think I don't know, but and I'm really butchering. Yeah, yeah, too. no, that is the parable of the talents you're talking about there. I believe, yeah. yeah. Jesus was not a socialist. He he believed in helping the poor, but he also believed that people should innovate and improve themselves too. Yeah. Do whatever yeah. Economy. It was a story about how, you know, a business owner called him master, you know, but the word was, you know, and and the servant who, you know, he gave gave money to three servants and when he came back, some had invested it and got made a profit and he rewarded those and he cursed the one who had just buried it and saved it and did nothing to make it grow. Sorry, yeah. That's so it, that's um, it, yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah, yeah that's terrible. Yeah. Another thing I like to bring up is like saying that Jesus, like I've heard people say that Jesus was a communist, that he was um I like putting these politic our current political terms on an ancient figure is completely retarded. Jesus was not a socialist, he did not know what socialism even meant. He you know, he you know 
that was just caught like that's like saying that Bob the caveman was an anarcho capitalist or inspired it. Like these terms did not exist when Jesus was around. Yeah, I'm telling you, when I was an atheist, I could have spotted the, the word games this guy's playing. And I knew even 10, 15 years ago when I was still an atheist, when I would hear stuff like that, I'd say, these guys crazy. You know, it's part of why I wound up getting out of atheism, because I learned guys like this were crazy. And I'm, I'm begging any p young people listening to this, most of you are fatherless young men and looking at... Uh, Aaron Ra as some sort of hero uh, father figure, and he's not. He's just giving you bad information so you'll support him. And really, I want to know, doesn't anybody in the atheist community, I mean, some obviously do. I'd like to see more come out again, like Tim O'Neill. Tim O'Neill, who does not like us, and that's okay. He's not required to. He doesn't like Aaron Ra either. Yeah, well, exactly, because he's going to be... His, ex his exact words were, having seen that guy's videos, anybody who takes that freak as an authority on anything deserves the crap they get. Yeah, well, there you go. And I appreciate him saying that. There's something we agree on. He probably doesn't like my style. All right, let's give this another minute of this. Or did you have something more you needed to say, or agent? No, nah, go ahead. I think the lady atheism... I just say something. He had his hands ring. Oh, he raised his hand again. Go ahead. Uh, I, I just had a, uh, if, if Jesus was a socialist, would that make Aaron Ra's preferred economic system a, a theocracy? Is that how it works? Yeah, no kidding. Oh, no. no kidding. All right, let's 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 push through. Let's see if we can get this finished. Let's give him another minute or so. Communists were rarely, if ever, exclusively atheists, and atheists are oh, rarely yeah. communists. My wife's family, for example, fled Vietnam when the communists took their land and imprisoned her grandfather, among many other horror stories she tells. And consequently, she's an atheist with no love of communism at all. Most of the Christian claims we hear about atheist regimes are hogwash, and much of what we hear about Christianized history is whitewash. Let's not forget St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, where Catholics slaughtered tens of thousands of French Calvinists in 1572 yeah. in the name okay. of God. Then remember the heavy persecution that began again with the Edict of Fontainebleau by Louis XIV in 1685. That's why Louis XVI signed the Edict of Tolerance a hundred years later, allowing non-Catholics to practice religion freely at last. Remember, Henry VIII initiated anti-Catholic hostility that led to Anglican and eventually German Protestants persecuting or killing Catholics, and we've had wars of Catholics against Orthodox, to say nothing of Puritans torturing Quakers in the American colonies, all in the name of God, which it has to be when it's one religion versus another. Which God? Well, whether you call him Abba, Allah, or Hashem, they're all the father God of Abraham, you know, Jesus' alleged dad. So they're all fighting over different interpretations of the same God, and they're killing each other in the name of that God. All three major Abrahamic religions claim to be all about peace and love, yet they've all been at war with each other continuously since their inception, while also being at war with the Hindus who are at war with the Sikhs and the Buddhists. Then, of course, there's the genocide of tens of millions of Native Americans, which was... Oh, man, we may have to back up on that one. That was such a load of... Oh, my God. Yet you will not take responsibility for your co-religionists, the atheists, sir. Uh, who, who have a better, who have, who have a worse murder record than all of the above you just mentioned. Come I uh, don't you love the double standards? The double standard is this, yeah. I mean, I'm, I really have to give this speech. During the worst time of my life, I, as a Christian, um, was befriended and helped by, and as a Catholic Christian, was befriended and helped by Mormons and Hindus more than anybody else. Plus, I had incredibly kind and useful to, of support from Orthodox religious Jews. I like them all better than I like you, sir. And you and you fellow, your, 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 your fellow travelers are a threat to all of them. Um, you genuinely frighten me and, and your followers frighten me because you're so hateful and you're so intolerant the way you twist history. I wish, and I will tell Tim O'Neill right now who I would still bring on here anytime he wanted to come, even if he doesn't like me. This is why I'm so mad, sir. Um, I've faced persecution. I really have, and I get laughed at when I say it. Friends and family have. I've even known people beaten up for being Catholic. Um, and none of my atheist friends will stand up and say they denounce this anti-Catholic hatred. Catholics are number one next to Orthodox Jews, religious Jews, as the most targeted for hate crimes, more so even than Muslims in the United States. 
Uh, does anybody in this community ever even stand up against this sort of thing? Or do you just laugh at Aaron Ra as he spouts this madness, this hateful madness? Um, I'm glad to see some atheists will stand up against it. Who wants to say something? I see Robert Freed, and and I have Robert, then deflating, then albino. Go ahead, Robert. And then me. Then me. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, he says, "Oh, let's remember the Saint um, Barl." Uh, I can't pronounce that. You know that massacre. Um, yeah. Do we need to remember the fucking Vendée massacres that occurred? You know, against Catholics in that region, due to the fact they wouldn't. Re they would. They would. Ah, I can't speak. They refuse to give up their religion, huh? Huh? And okay, yeah, he has a girl. He has a wife who's a soldier from Vietnam. Personally, I think he should know better because even in Vietnam, there was a brutal persecution of a religion known as Cao Dai by the Viet Minh in the 1940s and 50s that killed between 40 to 50 thousand Cao Dai practitioners. And they did so because they were religion. Um, and then, yeah, I want to bring up my um, my ex girlfriend. You know. Um, or no, geez. Oh, oh, no, no. He said, um, rarely are communist atheists and atheists are rarely communists. Um, that's complete bullshit. Virtually every communist state that existed horrendously persecuted religion. Mongolia, all the Buddhist lamas were shot. Russia, all the Russian Orthodox priests were shot. And other religions like Islam was persecuted too, even. Um, the oh, Eastern yeah. Bloc country. Atheists are a threat to Muslims. Yeah, yeah, and um, and Eastern Bloc countries like we just had Tiger Crusader. He was from Romania. They persecuted um, people like um, Richard Rumbrand, who wrote his memoir "Tortured for Christ." They persecuted the Romanian Orthodox Church. Um, in China, there was um massive anti-religion campaigns in Tibet, and um, you know, Chairman Mao said to the Dalai Lama, "Religion is poison," which caused you know the Dalai Lama had to flee because of that. Another and, one of these um, very authentically spiritual Buddhists, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And, and, who would not object? Yeah. Who would not? Who would not adopt Maoist secular Buddhism, which is atheist? Buddhism. Right, right, right. And um, also, even to this very day in China, there are, there is a horrendous persecution campaign against a certain religion known as the Falun Gong. Yep, as well. And as the, state media, the state media characterize it as a you know as a um clash between a, um, communist atheism and idealistic theism and they've literally been butchered alive by the communist by the chinese communist party since 1999 there was a recent report by um ethan gutman and um david kilgore and it was updated and it was called bloody harvest and it goes into detail about the ghoulish practices of the regime there in china be sure to send me discord chat direct messages about this uh, uh, including all, all these links, so I make sure they all get in there. Um, all right, I have deflating atheism. You're next, sir. And the uh, Falun Gong massacre was recent history. That was only the 2000s, and now uh, China is seems to be ramping up its anti-Christian persecution. So in my non-expert opinion, I, I, I think the same fates uh, falling upon Chinese Christians might happen in you know five or ten years down the road because they're they're really ramping up. Uh, yeah, it's still going on. It's still going on with Falun Gong. Yes. And, and uh, uh, I'm glad uh, 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 Max uh, gave a shout out to uh, Tim O'Neill because if I, uh, I, uh, if the atheists won't believe us because we're all infected with God cooties, maybe they'll listen to Tim O'Neill and he'll blast all of Aaron Ra's bullshit right out of the water. But I have a quote here, and I know you guys have all heard it, but uh, maybe the listeners have not heard it. And it's a quote from the uh, blog "Well Spent Journey," and it's about it's about oh these uh, the religions have been at war for the past two thousand years, and this is what the uh, the writer of, of this blog says uh, in their comprehensive encyclopedia of wars. Phillips and Axelrod document the recorded history of warfare. Of the 1,763 wars presented, a mere 7% involved the religious cause. When Islam is subtracted from the equation, that number drops to 3.2%. Okay, so, so this whole religion is the cause of all wars is bullshit. It, it, yeah, it truly is. Uh, be sure to send me the link to whatever you just read from there so I can have it after the show and can put it in the show notes. Make sure it goes on the blog entry. Okay. I also show, I'm sorry, I, I show albino next. 
yeah, forgive me. I'm gonna try to hold back on ranting on this uh, <laughs> on this guy. But it's this whole, and I've dealt with this on Facebook. I've dealt with this on other forums, baiting these people. We've given him, and he's obviously read the literature, the history, the facts that say that you know it ain't all just religion causing all the wars. And he reverts with that little uh, section that we just watched again to, but my crusades though. You know, if you've ever seen that meme, it's this whole stupid childish sack of crap that they like to push. They cannot accept responsibility for themselves or what their brand of thought has done. And that, and that, and it may not necessarily be their exact brand, but at least they should own up to atheism has committed atrocities at the very basic level. This is, they just won't because they're utopianist revisionist idiots. And it sickens me when he goes back to this over and over again. It's why. You obviously know better. Why are you not going? Why are you? I'm not, <laughs> I know. I really understand because, see, <clears throat> what I would tell all the people we've gotten too angry with at times, you know, like your godless cranium, like your Shannon Q's, like even your Steve McRae, who maybe I've overreacted to. There's a certain level where we look at this and we get angry and you act like we're crazy because we're angry or there's something wrong with us or you psychoanalyze us. No, we have a right to be angry. This man is spouting filthy lies that spread. We're, we're angry because he's uh, spreading false history. False history uh, that affects the lives of some of us. This affects our lives and our families. It really does. And it's not funny anymore. And it's not clever, and it's not witty, and it's not just a controversial opinion. It's hateful beyond belief is what it is. Speaking of which, <clears throat> go ahead, your turn, engine. Okay. All those wars and atrocities committed in the name of God had nothing to do with God. God didn't have anything to do with it. Nowhere did Jesus say to kill anybody or discriminate against anybody or all that shit. Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 36. The gist of that is basically love your enemy. He who lives by the sword will die by the sword. Matthew chapter 26, verses 52. Not all who say to me, Lord, Lord, will see heaven. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Did I lose you? No, you got no, I'm going. I apologize. I've got you. Okay. Did anybody else want, or should we go ahead and push through to the yeah, end? Yeah, I got something, too. Go ahead, Brass. Um, the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre was a serious political conflict that came after the instigation of the of Catherine D. Medici, a.k.a. the mother of King Charles um, IX of France. Yeah, she the Medici. Had she had purposely um, started conflict between the groups of the, the Protestant leaders by having them killed, which created a domino effect. She was then able to convince the king that the, the Huguenots were going to rebel, even though they had no intentions to. So it was orchestrated by the monarchy and which took advantage of a bitter rivalry. The people that killed were killed in the name of the queen, if anything, and not God. And, you know, and the, the edict of um, far, I can't pronounce that. It demolished the, the edict of Nantes. Yeah. You know, it, it demolished the edict of Nantes, which his grandfather, like the king's grandfather, had enacted, which allowed religious tolerance. Be sure you to know, provide links after the show, okay? You know, Make sure I got them collected you know, in one place. Well, you know, and Lewis, like, you know, and, and the um, Lewis I, you know, X, you know, 14, while a devout Catholic, was also a dick who dreamed of an autocracy where he had supreme rule. This, like, you know, and the etic of toleration, which he brings up, didn't allow, like, you know, this to give him a little bit of a leg. You know, the etic of toleration didn't allow non-Roman Catholic Christians to pray you know, to freely practice religion at the time, it merely allowed limited freedom of worship to them and removed civil disabilities to them while maintaining that the Catholic Church was the best. 
he also had talked about you know King Henry and the uh, King Henry the Eighth and his anti-Catholic dogma, and says it was in the name of of God when it when it is one religion like. When he says, like, when it's one religion against the other, it obviously has to be about God. But this all this often goes against him when he says, like, you know, religious people are simple people. Because he doesn't factor in ideological differences, politics, and years of rivalry, which came into place beforehand. Or he economic. Also fails to know that it wasn't, you know, he also doesn't fail to, he also fails to realize, like, this wasn't like it was continuous fighting throughout the entire time as there was time periods of tolerance. And lastly, you know, the claims that Hindus are at war with the six, you know, is ridiculous because the six came about in order to resist Islam in India. You know, I had a veterinarian who was a Sikh. He was a really nice guy too. All right, let's try pushing through to the end of this. I've had just about enough of it, but we got about two and a half minutes. I don't know if we need to get it all. Hang on, let me see. It was begun by Catholic conquistadors, but continued by Protestant Christians like Andrew Jackson, our first Trinitarian Christian president. Remember that prior to Columbus's famous discovery, Pope Nicholas directed Spain's King Alfonso to capture, vanquish, and subdue the Saracens, pagans, and other enemies of Christ, to put them into perpetual slavery, and to take all their possessions and property. This Christian doctrine of discovery was adopted into U.S. law by 1823. Our history records that indigenous Americans were described as pagan savages wow, who must be killed in the name of civilization and Christianity. Thus, thousands, if not millions, of Native Americans were killed deliberately in the name of God, where Why? no one I know of was ever killed in the name of atheism. Uh, Remember, despite what religious propagandists true. say now, the Nazis were Christians too, whether Catholic or Lutheran. Uh, the concentration camps uh, based on the reservations we created to detain tribal natives. Hitler said his hatred of the Jews was based on religious beliefs rather than racial liar. knowledge, and the liar was inspired by the published anti-Semitism of Martin Luther, founder of Protestant Christianity. So don't pretend that Protestant Christians are better than anyone else, or that Christians in general are better than everyone else either. Of course, all through history, atheists have been, and in some countries still are, arrested, tortured, and killed simply for not believing in whatever religion is favored by the local authorities, because irrational beliefs can only be promoted with an irrational defense. So what have we learned about predominantly atheist or secular governments beyond 20th century communism? Uh, can we stop here for a moment? I'm just going to stop here. Okay, uh, go ahead. John Baptiste actually put his hand up. So, Jean-Baptiste, if you are ready, sir, please unmute yourself. I have one also. I'll go last. Okay, and so we'll have Jean-Baptiste, and then go ahead, Jean-Baptiste. Okay, so the Nazi Nazis were Christian was false. Well, for one thing, the Catholic the the Pope at the time excommunicated any uh, Catholic Nazis, and then for the second thing, there's the positive Christianity, which was a a mixture of Christianity and Nordic paganism. It was it was weird, but it, it um their whole their whole idea was to take was to take Christianity, remove all the Jewish parts, anything that was that was uh, whitewash it essentially, and then put in Nor Nordic stuff with. The Nazi Party as the top of the uh, hierarchy before, before God, it was it, it. That's just a lie that the Nazis were Christian. They 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 accepted Christianity at first, but slowly they they started to, you know, force this positive Christianity uh, upon, um, the denominations. And if the denominations rejected it, then those denominations disappeared. Those churches disappeared. Um, so I don't know where he's getting that information from. I will add a book to the links. Uh, uh, the Myth of Hitler, Hitler's Pope, Pope Pius XII and His Secret War Against Nazi Germany by Rabbi, Rabbi David G. Dalen. That's right. A Jewish rabbi debunks these myths about the Nazis being Christian and supposedly being Catholic and the Pope supposedly ruling things. The, again, uh, Aaron Ra, you're simply 
making things up and you have no excuse not to know these things are not true i have engine next is that right last your last then it's, I robert. Raise my hand. Then it's robert okay okay so we mentioned native americans sublimus die condemned the brutalization of the native peoples by the catholic church however what happened was that um, they couldn't really do anything because the Spanish Empire, you know, contrary to what, you know, he read in some shitty book that, you know, some shitty pseudo historical book, the Catholic Church wasn't this monolithic thing. Empires had their own sovereignty to do whatever they want. So the Spanish Empire continued to brutalize the natives despite all the decrees and condemnations that the Catholic Church were sending, like the Blumas die. And on the whole Nazis were Christians thing, um, bullshit, 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 because the Office of Strategic Services, which was the not um, the predecessor to the Nazi, uh, or geez, which was the predecessor to the Central Intelligence a Agency um, (CIA), it confirmed Nazi um, a Nazi um, plan to eradicate Christianity in their document, and this document was used to prosecute not high-ranking Nazi war criminals. The SS had um, the Nazi um, regime had security services which monitored um catholic priests and you know protestant pastors and would persecute dissenting ones there was actually one call um one agency called unit 2b headed by an ss officer named albert hartle and his job was to his task was to um find any kind of vatican plots against the fewer so no bullshit aaron I, I, and, and, you know, if we express any anger towards him as Catholics, he'll go, and uh, Robert, Robert here is in no way a Catholic, but if as Catholics we, we express any anger toward this hideous, hateful lie he's telling about us, he'll play victim. Aaron Ra, you're a hate monger, sir. I'm sorry. I'm not even ranting. I'm just calling it. This is what you are. Deflating atheism. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, you'll notice I liked when he said uh, uh, irrational beliefs can only be promoted by, uh, through irrational means. Uh, he, he, there's kind of a, 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 a no true Scotsman in that, where he's kind of uh, uh, preemptively absolving uh, uh, atheism of any of any uh, abuse because he says, well, if it's, if it's promoted through irrational means, it's not real atheism is I think basically what he's what he's implying there. Uh, I love the fact that Max has all these books bookmarked. Uh, uh, Aaron Ra here is throwing out supposed facts at a mile a minute. What are the sources for any of his claims? Now, if, if I'm if I'm correct, uh, isn't he behind a rational wiki? So I'm I'm sure if we go to rational wiki, it would just pretty much say the same things. I tell you, we could just go citation needed, citation yeah. needed, citation needed about once every two seconds in this sort of thing. It's it's just ludicrous. Albino, uh, what did you have to say, my friend? I mean, do we have to hold your fucking hand through every single historical event and every little religious conflict that's happened? A, a Ron, you done fucked up, A, a Ron. Jesus, I do we, how old? loud do we have to scream into your ear that stall what the atheist dictators have done i'm sorry i'm getting heated because just the stupid shit that he's saying it get me best you know irrational I'm beliefs reading. can only be promoted through right. irrational yeah. means well look at yourself and you his look at yourself you history denying propagandist idiot We've given you historical facts. You've, like I said last time, you've looked it through horse. I, I guarantee you've looked through historical facts. Yet you're promoting this crap like atheism. No, atheism do no bad. Only religion do bad. Ha ha! Look at stupid god man. Me smart ape man. You know, fuck <laughs> you. I tell you, the thing of the matter is, and and it's true is, harsh words like that aren't good for us. So you know, you'll want to do some praying after this. <clears throat> I think he and his followers need to hear this. And what the worst of his followers will do is this little psychological game where because you're angry, they will start saying, ha, 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 look, he's triggered. Ha, 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 look, he's insane. Ha, ha, ha. Meanwhile, they're allowed to get as mad as they want uh, over the top any time they want for any reason they want, and it's okay. You want, you want to get them mad, just question them. Just question them. Just contradict them. Just say you don't agree with something they're saying. They lose their minds. Because, by the way, most of the professional atheists are screaming narcissists when they aren't complete sociopaths. And by the way, 
all sociopaths are complete narcissists and and so yeah so engine what would you like to say sir white engine well killing the natives uh, most of them die from disease that the europeans brought over but just over that then there's the um also many native american tribes worship the same almighty god but yeah other than that referring to the nazis he's conveniently forgetting the catholic underground railroad basically which tried to get all the jews out of there and tried to overthrow hitler i yeah yeah um the thing is and and the deaths of all the three million catholics and that not a single one of hitler's inner circle members was a christian they were either atheists or occultists yeah and atheists or occultists yeah <clears throat> Yeah, I forgot what I was going to say. I'm sorry. I didn't um, throw you off track. We're almost done here. Anybody got anything else to go? Yeah, oh, I had something to do. Robert, like, you already went. We'll, we'll get you at the end. Go ahead, Brass. All right. I was saying, like, in regards to the whole Pope Nicholas and King Alfonso thing, I assume he's talking about the Dim Dervaises. And context isn't Aaron Ra's strong suit. This was written during a time when Christians were being badly persecuted by the Muslims. It was a rally to Christendom to confront um, the um, Islam and the Saracens and the pagan mercenaries they had got from countries they conquered. The bull was to Spain only and was authorizing the conquering of Muslims in order to stop their aggression. The slavering jailing would be prisoners of war for their, cr their war crimes against them. This was actually a light sentence back then, as it was financially better to just kill them or to hold the rich ones hostage. And I'd also like to point out that this papal bill that, you know, he totes about was overwritten 50 years later by Francisco de Victorio, Victoria toward um, when he told the Spanish emperor at the time that the native people were the true owners of the lands. And as Felix Cohen in the Handbook of Federal Indian Law states, only voluntary consent could justify the annexation in the absence of a just war at the time. And, you know, and he goes into the whole, you know, John Marshall case, like with the and the, the Macintosh case. Go ahead. The and discovery, send me that you know, the discovery doctrine was brought back was brought back in and john marshall aka the chief justice of the mcintosh case modified it as a mechanism designed to prevent conflict between european competitors looking for lands in the new world marshall had a faulty interpretation which was shitty as that is what set the natives back the christians really had nothing to do about it as it was just bad history it was bad history and bad legal interpretation all right and you know now I remember what I was going to say. You know, right. Oh, and one more thing. Like I also think that this whole whitewashing of the, the Indians need to stop. Well, yes, there was a lot of good Indians that got wiped out for bad reasons. There were also barbaric tribes like the, the Peck, I can't pronounce, the Pequit tribes, which were known for being hostile. Historians aren't divided on what exactly to call the, ki the killing of a lot of Indians. They weren't all genocides, and some of them were actually necessary wars. As part Indian, I can attest to all that. Assuming that they're all peace-loving uh, tree huggers is just fantasy. I, there, are, there are even tribes that hate each other worse than the white man. It's absolutely true. You know, not that everything the white man did was great and noble. It wasn't, but there was atrocities on all sides. And there was a time when most Native Americans, I had family who were from the Miami tribe, just, you know, they knew they were, there was good and bad on all sides. And yes, there were some very bad things people did, but at some point. Hell, hell, look at the Aztecs. By the way, have you ever noticed that they rock an atheist historical grievance narrative and the atheists were oppressed for thousands of years? Yeah, it's really funny. Let's finish the last 40. Oh, oh, no, I was, I was going to bring up what I forgot. That um, the belt buckles saying God with us and the crosses so on their uni on the SS uniforms, those were leftovers from the Prussian Empire. And I like to ask Aaron Ra what Hitler did with the churches that he didn't burn down. He replaced crosses with swatiskas. And, basic, and he was a quasi-deist. He was not a Christian or a Catholic, but there was anti-Semitism that gave rise to the Nazi hatred of <clears throat> the Jews, but it was not in any way religious, uh, citation needed. But he was um, 
he hated the Jews because he felt they were ruining Germans econ- Germany's uh, economy and everything. And, well, he had a thing against their religion, too. Yeah, yeah um, also that. It was mostly economic reasons, but there was also religious issues there. And he wanted to enforce his own warped version of Christianity, which wasn't Christianity at all. Well, right. It was an atheistic version of Christianity, just like Maoist Buddhism is secular Buddhism is atheistic Buddhism. Let's push through to the end of this uh, because we got to wrap it. And also, get- if he is such a faithful Catholic, then why use the um, Protestant poster boy as his inspiration for his uh, anti-Semitism? And many Lutherans were were murdered, and many were. were- he also he also idolized an atheist, Nietzsche, which gave rise to his um, idea of the Superman, the superior race. But let me point out Protestants like Dietrich Bonhoeffer and and, and quite a few others um, who were Protestants who were murdered because they wouldn't give in to Nazi atheistic so-called positive Christianity. Let's finish this out. In a previous video of the series, I've already explained how religious believers are statistically far more prone to violent criminality and acts of immorality than atheists are. But I should oh, fuck say off. that the most fuck off, you asshole. today are also the greenest and most technologically advanced. With the single exception of communist China, they are also the most tolerant societies and popularly considered to be the nicest places How to convenient. live. With the best systems of education and healthcare, as well as the best economies and ecologies with the lowest crime rate and the worst criminals being devout believers. Pretty much exactly the opposite of what biased, dishonest, right-wing, religious extremist propagandists want you to think. Uh, as opposed to you, the atheist, hate propagandist, and extremist. Okay, so we let that go. Uh, I want to know who wants final thoughts. I think deflating your your hand went up. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I just final thoughts. I'm sorry. Just just pursuant to his last point, I'm gonna maybe somebody can correct me here. Is it was it the whole Nazi uh, theory of the origin of races where, where you have the Aryans and you ha- you have the Ashkenazi Jews. Wasn't that all from like Madame Blavatsky or something? And isn't that c- in complete contradiction to what the Bible gives us? So it, it seems kind of odd that he would lay that at the feet of Christianity. Uh, I love the, the uh, selection bias of, of the list of the secular countries, uh, just alighting, of course, the, the you know, brutal uh, atheist dictatorships. Uh, you will notice um, a lot of those northern European countries have, in in terms of the global population, absolutely microscopic population. So they're not really statistically significant. And I think there's good evidence that a lot of these these very secular, uh, uh, small northern European nations with negative birth rates are basically imploding. So I, I would not hold them up as examples. Yeah, I don't have references here. I may or may not bother to get them, but I can tell you for a fact that uh, actually Japan is exploding uh, with religiosity and that the Buddhists and Shintoists there do not like atheists and atheists are not popular in Japan. Um, uh, and uh, Czech Republic is exploding with religion. And actually it turns out quite a few of these country of, of European countries um, information is that while the press isn't reporting it, there's a massive religious revival all across Europe. It's openly the case in Russia. It's openly the case in Hungary, in Poland, in uh, Slovakia, um, in Romania, and quite a few other places. Others, it's known that religious belief is on the rise, but religious repression keeps people out of church. So they're being faithful and devout at home uh, waiting for the religious repression from secularists like you to end, sir. Uh, globalist secularism, which is what you all about, uh, secular humanism, is a repressive ideology run by hateful, intolerant bigots like you, sir. Please support my First Amendment rights in saying that, by the way. All right. Did anybody else? Okay, ro- okay, Robert, I see your hand just went up. Go ahead. Okay, so he does the... A typical um, militant atheist thing where he says, oh, look at these countries, you know, they're atheists and they're, you know, prosperous. Oh, look at the shithole religious countries, which is funny because that's the same thing the all right does. Only the only difference is they add race and homogeneity to it. Um, ju- you don't believe me, Google their arguments. But here's the thing. If you actually look into the studies, 
you'll see that um, active religiosity, as opposed to just nominal um, cultural religion, actually is very beneficial for people, for moral characteristics. So, I mean, really, take a magnifying gut, glass and do a little dig do a little better digging and i also like how he how he just tries to um exclude china because they're a far larger country with a much bigger population <laughs> and there's you know they're killing those falun gong practitioners yep um yeah and also if you look at many of these countries they were heavily religious up until recent memory like sweden sweden had a 90 percent um church um church membership rate of all its members, like 90% of the people identified as with the Church of Sweden up until the 1980s. And the state church only lost um, its state church status in the year 2000. So really dig a little deeper than this fucking bullshit. Okay. Now, we are on vinyl statements, and I did cut off deflating, so he already raised his hand. Go ahead, deflating. Well, I find it funny that they that they hold up a Sweden as the city on the hill, and they say we should emulate them in terms of uh, of being largely secular. But again, that's another kind of selection bias. Wait, should we also emulate them in terms of having a state church? Because it seems like all the all the European countries where secularism is thriving now are are, are countries that historically had state churches. Uh, and, and speaking of Sweden, uh, this is just an anecdote, but uh, uh, Max and I both know this guy from Sweden who is a Christian. I actually sent him an invite to uh, be on my Facebook group, the Deflating Atheism Facebook group, and, and he, he uh, messaged me back and said that no, he could not be a member of a group called Deflating Atheism because he would face social ostracization from being a member of such a group. So that is the culture in Sweden at the moment. So you can't tell me that that's, that that's tolerant. And it's, it's, it's also, it's also the rape capital of the world. It's, it's population. It's, it's, it's demographics are imploding, but uh, you know, I, that's, that's the thing is, is that you, you can't, you can't hold these up as tolerant things. It seems like secularism, always bends in the direction of totalitarianism. And I'll point, point again to his shirt, which says basically, uh, uh, your private religious faith is an infringement of his rights. And I think that just says everything. I repeat, please, re please I repeat, Aaron Rob, please support our First Amendment right to criticize you this way and to criticize and our First Amendment right to criticize your fans. Um, okay, we are on final statements. So if you already did, went, you're done. Albino, you're next. You know, speaking on Sweden, and again, I would like to apologize for my last outburst, but it was just getting me. But speaking on Sweden, they're going to be blown off the cultural map because the constant influx of migrants and their atheist feminist policies, they're, as uh, I believe the flag of atheism said, they're imploding upon themselves. France is going through a similar issue. A lot of Western Europe is going through a similar issue. So you, for you to sit there and tell us, well, look at these pseudo atheist paradises. I'm like, the facts just aren't there to support your claims. You're a propagandist, as we've said time and time again. And you misrepresent history. You revise it. You just you completely butcher it to everybody. So I would ask that you please stop. Consider, as Robert Freed said, look, take a magnifying glass. Look at the fine print and do some more studying, and maybe you wouldn't be as much of a propagandist. But I, I, I get the feeling that you really don't care, and you want to continue sending, uh, you know, sending your hate propagandists. You can make a big money off of YouTube and every other platform. But so there you go. I, I'm going to repeat that I don't, I don't think it's possible to, you know, get any kind of uh, honest recantation out of him. But I beg his followers to realize you're being taken for a ride. You really are. White Engine, you're next. We're still on final statement, so <laughs> if you haven't had one, get one ready, White Engine. Okay, what was his last point? I forgot. It was on the European countries. Yeah, there's so much. Oh, yeah. Like, all these atheist countries are supposedly peaceful and whatnot, but um, there's uh, Switzerland and Austria that are more religious and are doing better off than them combined. Yeah. Also, that this whole communism and atrocities, the reign of terror, and all that, 
These aren't reflected on atheists in general, but those who use the exact same rhetoric that people like Aaron Ra use. The exact same. Good Religion boy. gets in the way of progress. We need more science. Religion, yeah. there is no God. This and that. And I want to say my and, and about and about not- and about and about history, like uh, he makes decent science videos. I will get, I will give him that. But when it comes to the Bible, God, uh, philosophy, and especially his history is absolutely atrocious. It is just worse than bad. His only talents lie in science. Otherwise, he is a fucking joke. He, he truly is. He's, Robert, e- he's either he's either willfully ignorant in order to glorify his ideology, or he's lying. Yeah. Yeah, and I, will, and I will say very I, fast, Robert, because you already went very fast. Okay, okay, sorry. Um, and I will say, uh, any any sensible atheist who is watching this, I'm not taking my anger and rage out on you. It's on this fucker only, and this fucker only. So, yeah, I mean, all right, that's all I have. Yeah. Him and those, and him and those who worship him. Stop. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, uh, like, um, Brass, you got a last one. Yeah, like you know, of, get one if you want one after stated, this. You know, a lot has been stated, like you know, with Austria and Switzerland, which are highly religious and yet had notoriously low corruption. And he fails to take into consideration that all those places that he mentioned happen to have the same like low, um, low like statistics for crime and everything way before when they were not they were um when they were very religious. He also fails to take into consideration that places like, you know, the less religious places like Estonia, Latvia, and North Korea have high murder rates, and Estonia has the lowest percentage of believers than any other country in Europe, and it has these high murder rates. Like I said before, you know, a lot of these places in Europe had these great rates before they became atheistic, making the correlation between them null and void. I, and you know what? Check the uh, suicide rates uh, in those countries, too. They're astronomically high in atheist countries. Uh, John Baptiste, did you want uh, any final word? If not, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, yes, it, it, it's uh, this atheist friendly. It, it's is that people is these pe- places that allow, you know, atheism because everything allows atheism. What they're saying in Japan, as if like there's a lot of atheists in Japan. Most most of the uh, Japanese are, are Shinto um, or Buddhist. Those are the two like major. Anything. Those are the two major uh, religions in in Japan currently. It, yeah. It's I I don't know. That's all I had to say about that. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Yeah. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out there. Um, uh, I, 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 Aaron Ra has no excuse not to know that the things he's saying are not really true. Uh, his fans do, but I'm going to say it again, guys. If you're an Aaron Ra fan, whenever I run into one of you, you're just horrible. And and I'm going to say again that you know I go after atheism as an ex-atheist, and I always try to capitalize, you know. And when you really push me, I say it's the militant atheist. But I have been so hatefully abused and friends and family of mine have been hatefully abused by spouting the toxic hate propaganda that comes out of Aaron Ra and his followers. If you're one of his followers, please, oh my God, you're horrible. And people, and, and really, I, I, I am genuinely afraid for my future and that of my family because of Aaron Ra. And, and, and people like him are what drives a lot of my hostility to the capital A atheist community. And I'm sorry, if you're an identitarian who is rocking the capital A atheist badge or the capital S skeptic badge or the spaghetti monster badge and hanging out with a bunch of other atheists, I'm sorry, you are part of an identitarian movement and you're frightening because you treat people poorly. You, 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 you 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 literally talk down to people while spouting madness and say abusive things at them and then you laugh at them when they get angry and try to defend themselves and you mock them for defending themselves um it's hideously hateful um and that's what the typical internet atheist is like and it really does come across that way and those of you who aren't like that 
say something and don't get mad at me. Get mad at this guy. I invite the great debate community. Anybody who's got the guts, I got an debate coming up with a Calvinist, uh, you know, Sola Scripturist, uh, Independent Baptist. Um, I would be happy to uh, take that guy down on behalf of even some of his fellow Protestants who can't stand his read on the Bible. Um, and I would love to take on Aaron Ra or anybody who would like to defend the hideously hateful and dishonest Aaron Ra. Um, uh, and please, again, I ask Aaron Ra and his followers to support my First Amendment rights, support my First Amendment rights in saying so, and, and come debate me. All right, everybody, uh, tomorrow night, I forget what we're doing tomorrow night, but we've got something every night. Uh, we got men's rights stuff coming up on Monday and Tuesday next week, so stay tuned for that. And uh, give us a like, give us a subscribe. Thank you so much to everybody who was part of this, and God bless everybody.